All right, welcome back everybody to the Dr. Bradley Campbell podcast. On this episode, we have the founder, creator, mastermind behind Honey Bee Hippie, Jill King, who is an amazing human. And um, I just love your products. I've tried dozens of different tallow products and these are the products that I find to test the best, work the best, not have any negative reactions for people. And they really just work. We've given them to dozens and dozens of people, dozens of patients, some of our online members, and we've just had amazing feedback. I haven't had one bad thing to say from hundreds of people we've given it to, which is great. The only thing I guess would be that like sometimes, um, since you're making them all yourself, things get sold out or there's lower quantities, which you've been working on the last year or two, and it's been really coming along, which is great. So um, that's a good problem to have for sure. So just curious, um, if you'd be so gracious to kind of like give us some of your story of um, not your full life story, but just some of the story around you and how you came to develop such a great product. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really, really excited and I'm excited to share and just get you know information out about, um, I always say it's just, these are God's ingredients and he gives us everything we need that we need to, you know, be healthy to thrive in this world and even beyond. But um, so my background is um, I went to school and uh, got my master's in physical therapy, went to school a little before the doctorate program was around. So I got my master's in physical therapy. I actually um, ended up opening up my own physical therapy practice. My husband was in the military. We got married. We were stationed in Lawton, Oklahoma. There wasn't a lot of physical therapy places around. So right off the bat, um, I ended up opening up like after a year of practicing, opened up my own practice and we, um, got pregnant before we planned to, (laughs) we were going to wait, you know, got married, like, Oh, we'll wait five or six or seven years. We were, I was 24, he was 23. And so we thought we'd wait a little while. And after being married only, I don't know, a year and a half or something, we found out that we were having our first child. So I only practiced for about maybe three years. And knew I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. It was just something that was um, ingrained in me from a child. My mom stayed at home with us, and I just really wanted to have that experience. And you know, thankfully, we were able to do that. So after um, owning it for about three years, ended up selling my practice, and he ended up getting out of the military with 9/11. And we, our daughter was oh boy, I, less than a year, or maybe a year and a half. I don't. She was born in 2001, so she was less than a year when that happened. So we ended up moving out to California. My family lived out here. We moved out here when she was about a year and a half and then ended up settling um, in Huntington Beach about 18 years ago. And that's where we live now. And um, just throughout raising the kids, um, I've always been into healthy living, um, cooking, making tinctures. I'm always in the kitchen trying different, you know, let's, oh, let's try making the kombucha. Let's try, uh, you know, the different ferments, just kind of a little bit of everything. And um, how I got into Honey Bee Hippie was um, I've been hearing about tallow skincare probably about five or six years ago. A girlfriend of mine was like, oh, you ought to try tallow on your skin. It kind of just stuck in the back of my head. And I was like, well, that sounds really cool. Like that makes sense. If it's good to eat and it's good for your body, it's got to be good for your skin. But for some reason, I never looked at buying any. I never you know, tried it out for a little while. And the skincare just really confused me. I was never um, really into skincare. I mean, I bought it and I used it and I'd be like, oh, let's, you know, I'm 50. So it's like, let's try a little cream here and a serum here. And I had like a plethora of just, you know, what I thought were natural things. And then you look at some of the ingredients, even on natural products. And it's like, that's not really all that natural. And I never really felt like I got much results. Like I'd try everything and I didn't really notice much of a difference. Um, In my early forties, mid forties, I started going down the let's try a little Botox and filler. Did not like that. And especially after learning and you go into it thinking, oh, it can't be that bad. Everybody does it. And then you start learning about it. It's like, oh, I don't, you know, I got a few results that I didn't care for. I didn't like some of the things. And then just really getting scared of just the toxins and that and what it does to you. I had decided a few years back, just, no, nope, just stop that and just age. You know? <laughs> and so um, when I started thinking about this tallow thing again, I didn't even realize at the time, because it was only about a year and a half ago that I started making it. And I didn't realize that it's kind of become the next, I want to say up and coming, but I don't think it's trendy because it's ancestral. 
but it has made its its way back just like a lot of things do. Um, I didn't even know that. I decided one day, I was like, you know, I'm going to try making it myself. And I don't know why. Like I said, I didn't buy another company. So I just decided to like, well, let's just whip up a batch and see what happens. Um, so I shared it with, and my also my daughter was uh, pregnant at the time, about to have a baby. And I think that was a big, like looking back now, that was a big inspiration. She was um, getting some bad stretch marks and I was, I think now looking back, I was really looking for something that was effective and safe and would work. Um, so I shared it with, I made a batch. It was not very good. <laughs> um, I shared it with a friend of mine who owns a non-toxic refill shop. And um, she had already carried just the little bath soap products that I had made. Um, and they were kind of starting to sell there. And she's like, oh, I've been wanting to carry tallow. Why don't you, you know, get the consistency and everything great and like, let's try it here. So I worked on it for a few months. I would go back and forth with her and my family and her staff and everything, you know, trying it out until it came up with a product that everybody liked. And so she put it in her store and it just I don't know, went crazy. Like people were coming in and stories started coming in like, wow, I used this one time and my eczema went away, or my kid's diaper rash, just different things were happening and people were just really liking it. And then it just kind of started growing from there. I decided to do um, a market down here and the same thing like a couple um, influencers picked it up and all of a sudden I started you know getting some stories on Instagram because I didn't even want to do an Instagram at first my daughter who's you know 23 she's more Instagram savvy and she's like mom why don't we make you your own Instagram and I can help you with it I'm like all right let's let's do it and so then that started picking up and um, just quickly things I guess evolved and I'd lay awake at night just thinking of man, it'd be really great. Like I need a hair oil. I can't find anything I like for my hair. And so I'm, you know, the wheels start spinning on different products and, but it basically all the products came out of a need for myself or my family. Mm -hmm. Like one of the first products was a product for a diaper rash because I had a grandbaby and yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at other products. I'm like, I don't want her to use these products. And so that's kind of how it got started. Love it. Um, and Yours is definitely different than other towels that I've seen too. I don't know if you want to, could I ask you to talk about that? Like what kind of separates your tallow from other tallows? I think one of the things, like I said, I'd never tried another tallow before I started making it. So a lot of what I did, and then later I thought maybe I should have bought some, but actually I'm glad I didn't because I didn't have anything to compare it to. Um, I did try, I've tried a few since because people will be like, oh, look what I just got or somebody gave me this here, try it. And so I try it and like, oh, interesting. Um, but one thing that I learned, I learned real quick, I started doing a deep dive on essential oils and really just found that I don't care for them for the skin. I think they may have their place in other things, but they're very, very uh, potent. Um, and I just think they're too strong for the skin and in order to get people will use them, especially in tallow because they want to get rid of, you know, a beefy smell. And so they'll use them um, as a fragrance and it's like, oh, it's a natural fragrance. But looking into it, the amount that you need to actually get a scent out of it is a lot. And it can take like pounds and pounds of the raw material to get even one drop of essential oil. So when you're putting your 12 or 13 or 15 or 20 drops into a product, I believe it's just not um, uh, beneficial for the skin. It's just way too strong. You wouldn't put pounds and pounds and pounds of a raw product on your skin. And so what I started doing, I thought it was unique. I know there are companies doing it, but I started um, herbal infusing the oils, like the olive oil, the jojoba, but then I thought, well, how am I going to get the smell out of this if I don't want to use essential oils? So when I was uh, you know, melting down the tallow and it's double boiler, I'm like, why don't I just stick all the herbs in there and do a warm infusion into there? And so I would do that. And then it's like it started smelling great. And I think it bent up the benefits big time because you're getting all the benefits of the herbs. Um, like I said, I'm not the only company that does that. So I don't want to make it sound like I yeah. invented the wheel or anything. But I thought at the time I was, you know, I'm like, Wow, I'm a genius. I thought of this great thing, you know. And so other companies are doing it and I, you know, I applaud them that are doing it, but I do think that makes a big difference is the herbal infusions. You get the whole spectrum of the herb and herbs are just, you know, they're phenomenal for for health, for our skin, for so many things. And it's very gentle. You can use them on babies, you can use them on all ages. Um and then I'm trying to think what else sets me apart. Um I just try and do everything. I mean, I don't I don't know a lot about other companies. I don't delve into them. You know, obviously I am aware of them and sometimes I'll check out their prices or check out their products. But, um, 
I just try and do everything with integrity and buying the organic ingredients, trying to find the best and just really just doing the best I can. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, tallow itself is quite ancestral too, right? Like it's been around for a long time, but it's got forgotten. Yeah, absolutely. And I lived through the age of the the non-fat age. (laughs) I think I was in college when it was really being pushed. And just knowing from a health standpoint, how terrible that is for your body. I mean, I remember doing the, you know, you go to the store and everything was all of a sudden non-fat and, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. And so I remember even eating that way. It's like, why am I so tired all the time? I'm, you know, 20 something years old. I have no energy. Looking back now, I think it's because at the time I didn't have all the good saturated fats in my diet for, I don't know how many years I, you know, dabbled in that. Even being in the nutrition field and taking nutrition classes, you know, as you, as you know, when you go to college, um, a lot of times that information is just not accurate and they're just going with whatever the newest trend is, you know, and they're not teaching things that are, that are true. Totally. Um, I love that you can actually, not that you would eat the whole product cause it'd be a really expensive meal, but how, um, but you can actually eat the product. Like if you get some of the lip stuff in your mouth, like it's non-toxic, but I feel like over half of most sunscreens have been pulled off the market for being toxic and most skin things you can't eat as well. So I think I just want to like drive home how important that is for people listening or watching this, that it's just so beneficial because people don't realize your skin is so absorbent that if you put like a cut clove of garlic on your toe, usually within a few minutes, you can smell it on your breath. Mm -hmm. But that's why I think I love how you call your tallow product skin food, because even though it's not going in your mouth, you know, if you could put it in your mouth, it's still absorbing into your, through your skin, into your bloodstream and your lymphatic fluid and really does impact your body significantly. Absolutely. I mean, our skin's our largest organ. And a lot of times I think we think of our stomach and our liver and things like we put it in and, but we forget, a lot of people forget, like you said, how absorbable the skin is. And, and I mean, even certain medicines, they have topical medicines because they absorb into the bloodstream so quickly. And that's what I think is so great about tallow. So if you're, if you can't eat your skincare, like I said, technically, I mean, I wouldn't go around just eating it, but you know, if you can't eat it, if you can't, if if, then you shouldn't really be putting it on your skin because it does go into the bloodstream and get circulated through your entire body. And so that's what I think makes tallow so special too, is that it's full of vitamins. I mean, it naturally Mm -hmm. has vitamins A, D, E, and K. Um, it has like a fatty acid profile. It, um, that is great. It has, um, other nutrients. I don't even know exactly. I'd have to like look at a list of all the nutrients that tallow has. Um, but it really does feed your body and um, it, it's just phenomenal. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to just up your health of not just your skin, but I believe that just like the gut affects your skin, I have a theory, I, don't, I can't prove this, but I have a theory that even things you put on your skin can have an effect on your gut and your other organs. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we definitely know that to be true, especially even like a supplement or an herb on your skin um, has been used in Chinese medicine for a long time with different liniments and like healing herbal topicals. But um, it's kind of a practice that's gotten long forgotten. And it's nice to see you and other people bringing it back because um, for very sensitive people, they definitely notice what goes on their skin. Like they'll notice like, oh, if I tell them like they have a fungal rash and put tea tree oil on it, they need to dilute it a ton just for it to work because the essential oil is so strong. So I think for a lot of my patients and people who are more holistically minded who do really clean, they use clean living products and they don't use like toxic laundry detergent, their skin almost starts to get more conscious, more aware, more sensitive as well. So it's nice that your products um, work for those people. Yeah, I agree. But I I was also really curious um, about how you managed to grow. Oh, might be the network might be struggling a little bit. Um, I was curious how you managed to grow um, and have bees, like how you managed to get honey and have bees in California, because that's how the I believe how the name came along, right? Yes. So my husband and I have a backyard beehive. Um, they're not, it's not the honey we use in the products because we just don't get enough and we're very, very, um, novice at it, I guess you'd say. So we've had bees come and go and we're trying to prevent, you know, swarms and different things. And we're, you know, just watching videos and reading books and whatnot. 
Um, but yeah, so we started um, this beehive, maybe, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half years ago. And um, I just love honey for so many things. And especially for the skin, I think it's phenomenal. It heals so many things. It's kind of like tallow. It's um, been around for obviously a long, long time. It lasts forever. Um, and it just supplies so many vitamins and nutrients and things for the skin. And so, yeah, just laying, <laughs> laying awake one sleepless night and <laughs> thinking about things, trying to think of a name. <laughs> and somehow it just came to me. I was like, honey, honey, honeybee. And just, you know, kind of came to me. So, so yeah, the, the beehive thing is fun though. It's um, surprisingly in Huntington beach, there's a lot of bees. Like we'll go on a walk and sometimes find beehives just in like electrical boxes. Um, wow. So luckily, I mean, I think that's a very good thing because obviously we need bees and, yeah. uh, and luckily also our neighbors have been pretty cool with it. <laughs> oh, great. Nice. Um, I love the um, suntan lotion that you have as well. It's not really like a lotion, but could you talk about that a little bit more? Cause that's, I just want to hear more about it. <laughs> like how you came up with that. Yeah. So, um, so it's called face the sun and it has, um, I guess I'm not allowed to not supposed to call it a sunscreen. Sorry, it does, yep. you know, <laughs> act similarly act to similar, skin yes, exactly. protection, yes. Yes, um, which I didn't even realize that actually when I made it and made the label. So hopefully I won't have a problem with it. But um, so tallow naturally has an SPF of around 12. Mm -hmm. And I always like to say if I post about it or put it on my website is I fully wholeheartedly believe the sun is fantastic. I think we need the sun it's healing. It provides us, you know, we, we can't have life without it. So I also wanted to make something. Um, I originally started out with like a SPF, which would equal 30. And then the SPF of this one, which is about 20, but I actually like the lower SPF because I don't want to block everything. You know, I just don't want to get burned. Um, so yeah, it has tallow. It has non nano zinc oxide, which is a physical protectant. And as you know, um, skin care, skin cancer rates actually skyrocketed with the advent of chemical sunscreen. So they want to make you think that the sun causes so much damage and so much, I mean, it does age us. It does, you know, but it's still very good for us. But it, um, like I said, it's just really to me about not getting burned. And yeah. so I put the tallow, um, some mango butter, some shea butter, which are also just wonderful butters to use. Um, and then I wanted to just give a little tint because I don't like that white cast. And so I started just mixing up some different herbs together and putting that in there, some cocoa powder, some, um, hibiscus powder, calendula. Nice. And then, um, I take sometimes, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Astaxanthin. I don't know. Astaxanthin. Yeah. Astaxanthin. Thank you. I always pronounce it wrong. Astaxanthin. And it has this like really bright orange color to it. So I started thinking, I wonder what happened if you put that in there. And I started looking up the benefits of it because I've always heard of it as sunscreen from the inside out and yep. how it can be, you know, by eating healthy, you can also help prevent sunburns. And so I was like, I wonder if you could put that in skincare. So I did a bunch of research on it and found out you can. So I started putting, opening up the capsules and squeezing that in. And I love it because it, it's great for our skin. It helps with the, you know, it's a super antioxidant. I think it's like 600 times more powerful than vitamin C. And it also helps give that little bit of a orangey color. I mean, the, the product is not meant to color match necessarily, but it's nice that it doesn't give that white cast. Yeah, that's great. Um, super cool. And I've heard of some other um, influencers who are using rose or honey after sun exposure, especially if they do end up a little bit burnt for whatever reason, or that maybe they fall asleep for 12 hours and wake up. Um, but don't you also have a rose product from time to time? I do actually I have it right here. It's um, the rose oh, nice. hydrosol. <laughs> Look at this that. Like we a, planned it. Yeah. I have a little stash just in case, <laughs> but yeah, the rose hydrosol would work great for that. I like it too. It's a, um, it balances our pH of our skin and hair. And like you said, it can be very healing. Um, tallow is phenomenal healing for a sunburn. In fact, that was one of the very first, um, I guess, testimonies is we took my grandbaby when he was, I want to say like three months old and we thought we were shading him and, you know, but we actually, it's before I even had the face of the sun and he just got really fried one day in the Arizona heat. And it wasn't, we weren't even out that long. And so that night we're looking at him and he just 
bright red, looked like it was almost starting to blister. And I just, you know, it was heartbreaking. So we just slathered him in the tallow. I had the honey hydrate tallow at the time. And um, all night long, I want to say we applied it, you know, just throughout the night, putting it in his, on his face. I couldn't sleep all night thinking, oh, we're going to wake up and he's just going to be like blistered. And, you know, I mean, you've probably had a sunburn. It's not fun. No. And the next morning, my daughter's like, mom, mom, come here. We were at a, like a little Airbnb place. We had met halfway when she lived in Arizona. And I walk in, I'm like, oh no. And she's like, look, look at him. I look at him. Perfectly nice, pink, glowy skin. Didn't look burned at all. It was crazy. I'm like, oh. you've got to be kidding. Like I did not know tallow could be that. And it did have the honey in it too. So it was honey and tallow, but I didn't realize wow. it could be, um, you know, that quickly, I guess that quick of healing. And since then I've had heard a lot of people telling me about sunburns and just and putting the tallow on. Nice. Very cool. I also didn't know you had your own tooth powder now too. Yeah. So that was actually one of the first products, actually, maybe the first five. Like, See, you um, have so much good stuff. I don't even know all of it yet. That's I'm pumped. So what's the tooth powder? Uh, so the tooth powder is, um, it's uh, bentonite clay and it's a food grade. Cause I know there's going to be issues with bentonite clay having some heavy metals, but I use a food grade bentonite clay, baking soda, a high mineral salt. Cause you want to obviously mineralize your teeth and remineralize your teeth. Um, and then um, there's um, powdered eggshells in it, pasteurized eggshells. And basically those are a natural source of hydroxyapatite, which has become kind of big in the toothpaste, I guess. Yeah. And so when I first was looking at it, what usually happens with me is I'll see, like I started seeing tooth powders and I look at the ingredients and I'm like salt and baking soda. Okay. That's interesting. I'll just make my own. <laughs> but then I started thinking like, Oh, hydroxyapatite. And I think it was actually, I think it was uh, Jamie, the owner of Philip Buttercup, which is a non-toxic refill shop. And she's like, I wonder if you could put hydroxyapatite in, in a tooth powder. I was like, you know, I should look into that. So I started looking for a source of it. And basically it was all lab made. And I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. And so looking at sources, bone meal or bone marrow and eggshells are a natural source of hydroxyapatite. So that's kind of how that came about. And then, um, you know, saw that there was another, I, you know, doing some research, saw that that eggshells were being used in another tooth powder. I'm like, well, at least I know they can be used. And so just by, you know, boiling them first to get, make sure there's no bacteria and everything and drying them out and then grinding everything really super small. Um, mm -hmm. just so it's not abrasive on the teeth and then, uh, put a little bit of, you know, a little flavoring, a little mint oil in that one, just so you get that minty taste. But yeah, I love it. It, it, uh, polishes it. I think it whitens. I've seen some people recently. I'm like, you look so good. And then they're like, look at my teeth. They're whiter. <laughs> I've been using your tooth powder. So yeah, cool. I really like, I really like that product. Nice. Um, what about as far as the tallows you have, um, could you kind of go through just like the difference of it? I know it's like, we're kind of just geeking out on your product line, but I love it so much. I'm like, cause I know you have some, you have like honey hydrate and the natural mama one, you have miracle mud. Um, so I'm just curious, um, how are they, how, what would you recommend as like a general one or how do they differ? Okay. So recently I actually had to streamline some of them because I started out with like four different whips and it was almost like too confusing. People didn't know what to buy, but also it was just, there's no way to make them all. And so really like um, over the past few months, I was, you know, thinking, how can I streamline the product to make it easier to make it, you know, so now, um, and I think it's works, it's working really great. So now there's the honey hydrate, which is the whipped one. So there's only one whipped. So basically now like each tallow has one consistency. So there's a whipped one, which is the honey hydrate. It also, I um, added the frankincense resin. So it's got rose, calendula, chamomile, marshmallow root, frankincense resin, manuka honey. It's kind of got it all. It's like your top of the line, I guess you could say like a face cream, but you could use it anywhere. I mean, all the products you could pretty much use anywhere. And so then, so that one's the whipped. And then the natural mama is the balm. It's honey free. And I actually made that uh, because of my grandbaby, I wanted him to have something and I wanted my daughter to have something that would be able to use as a nipple balm. And so it started out with a separate nipple balm and then the natural mama. And then I thought that'd be a great way to combine them. So that's a balm consistency. So, um, anybody can use it. You can even use it as a face cream, but it is, like I said, it's honey free, a little bit less herbs. Um, 
Moms can use it on their nipples. They can use it on their bellies, their babies, diaper rash, anything. So it, that's the balm one. And then the Tello bar is a solid lotion bar. And that is, has a higher percentage of beeswax. Um, I don't have it sitting next to me. I was looking around to see if I had it here, but it looks kind of almost like a bar of soap, but it's actually a lotion bar and you can rub it on your skin, rub it anywhere. I'm going to use it as a lip balm. Um, I like to put it like under my eyes, on my neck, leave it in my purse to take with me. And then the new one is the um, California sunshine oil and it is a tallow oil. And so basically it's a higher, it's a higher percentage of oil to make it liquid, but it's nice because you can spread it all over your body um, in the heat the whips are definitely an issue. <laughs> the consistency changes, you ship them, it kind of melts a little. It doesn't quite stay as, as whipped. The nice thing about tallow is the, um, the properties stay the same, even though if something melts a little and rehardens, it's, you know, it's may not be the exact same consistency, but the, the healing properties are the same, but the tell the, the California sunshine is a nice oil that is great to take anywhere. I go down to the beach, go to the pool. Um, it's wonderful. Um, and then I just, I like to use tallow in a lot of other things. So the Miracle Mud started out also as two products, Baby Bum and Miracle Mud, because I wanted a diaper rash, but I decided to just make it the Miracle Mud. And it's for diaper rash. Um, I've gotten two stories back recently for bug bites, mosquito bites, itchy mosquito bites, and they put the Miracle Mud on and itching went away. Um, next day, one of them, like the mosquito bites look pretty much almost gone. So there's that, there's... Trying to think what else I'm looking around. I got my products over there. Um, magnesium butter is another product I I love. Um, has the magnesium chloride, has also some other oils, castor oil to help it penetrate the tallow. Um, you can put that uh, legs, feet, anywhere, like achy joint, um, achy muscles. Then there's the lip butter, which also is a tallow base. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of different products with tallow in it. And you asked me what makes them differ the consistencies and then the herbs used in them. So different yeah. products have maybe different herbs infused into them. Is one the best just for like overall dry skin? Would you use the whipped? Or you'd use the California sunshine or? I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. I think it's just a preference of a consistency and kind of what you're looking for. Um, the California sunshine was really, designed because a lot of people were asking me to make a bigger jar of the whip. They're like, can you make an eight ounce or a nine ounce jar? And I was like, it seems kind of pricey too, for someone to pay, you know, that much for that yeah. product. Um, so the California sunshine is designed as a body oil, but you can use it anywhere. So I would say the honey hydrate whipped would be more for the face, the California sunshine for the body. And then the natural mama balm really anywhere, you know, spot treatments on, dry skin on eczema, anything. But like I said, that really any of them can be used for any of those conditions. So it's really more just a preference of what someone likes. Got it. Nice. I've had a lot of good feedback too with the um, lip butter and the um, just for like replacing other lip balms. And people also have been telling me with the lip butter, they don't need it as often. Like some people are like, I have to put this on every like hour or two with some of the not so natural ones. But it seems like the, even though in Chinese medicine, dry lips typically comes from stomach heat or stomach stuff. I think because it is a skin food or it's like healing the skin the same time that you're actually using it. And a lot of it's ingesting, it's fixing some of the root problem too which you're seeing with eczema other stuff. It's not just like, oh, it's like a cortisol cream that like is anti-inflammatory and takes it away. It's simultaneously helping take away the skin problem, but it's also healing the internal body with the herbs at the same time, which is pretty cool. Right. Totally um, agree. And like you said, a lot of, I think, chapsticks are designed where you they do become addictive. You know, it's like you put it on, you feel great. And then like every 30 minutes or hour, you're like, I got to use this again. And I've heard the same thing. People say, I put it on my lips and like hours later, they still feel hydrated and great. And so that's, that's actually probably been the number one product, which kind of amazed me. You know? Yeah, for sure. I think the underrated one is probably the magnesium butter, the magnesium lotion for the, I put it, people put on their feet before sleep. And a lot of people are like, I just knocks me out. They're like, it's better than melatonin. They don't wake up groggy in the next morning. It's been really, I've been kind of pleasantly surprised by the magnesium butter, which has been nice. Well, thank you. But, yeah, I, I, I yeah. love, in fact, I got a big one infusing everything downstairs right now to jar that up today. But yeah, no, I, I love the magnesium butter. And I've gotten a lot of stories like that, too, of um, 
people putting it on their babies. What I like about the babies and the kids stories is sometimes the placebo effect for us, they'll ask me like, does it work? I'm like, I think it works, but it might be also because I want it to work, you know? But right. um, when people use it on their kids and they're like, man, my, my kids slept great. You know, that the same night I started using it, they started sleeping better. I'm like, okay, it's definitely not just a placebo effect, even though sometimes placebo can be a good thing, you know? But, totally. Yeah, it definitely works. Does anybody ever use it on their animals at all? You know, I'm not sure about, are you talking about specifically the magnesium or just any of them? Any of them. I was wondering like oh, yeah. dry nose or like skin stuff might be harder with the hair, but I'm wondering if anyone's up to experiment. Oh, no, I put, it on, I put it on my animals for sure. And I've oh, yeah. had a few people tell me the same thing. I have a cat that for some reason, like she wanders and comes back with like rashes from some plant or something. And I just put a little tallow on it. They do lick it. You know, the dogs love the tallow, too. <laughs> they do. Yeah. When I've put some on my body, the dogs are like running around to try to catch me. And I've had several people say their dogs ate their lip butter. Like a lot of people say that. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So hide it from the dog, even though it's probably good for them. Give them some natural yeah, exactly. vitamin A, D, E, K, some minerals. Could be good. Nice. Um, so has this made your life a lot busier or has it changed your life? at all having this company the last year or two yeah, um it's definitely made it busier but in a good way so one of my we have four kids and uh one of them's already out of the house and married you know has a baby already and our son our oldest son is in college so he's out of the house and then so the last two one's 18 so she still lives at home but she's going to school working a lot i'm always begging her to help me more um and then the, the youngest is 14. And the last two, we decided to pull them out after the 2020 thing and homeschool them. Um, so it's it's been great. I mean, I have my kids help me. My oldest daughter runs the Instagram. So my husband's doing laundry now. He never used to do laundry. Wow. So yeah, it's been, it's been busy, um, but in a good way. It's been exciting and it's been fun and it's been a learning process and um I think just because my kids are a little older, I don't think I could have done it when they were little. It would have been way too much. But because they're older and can help, and I think it's also good to see that um, I'm still around and I'm st and everything so far is still out of the house. At some point, it may have to, I may have to go get another like a little facility or something. But right now, it's at the house, so it's kind of become a a family thing, which is nice. Yeah, that is very nice. Um... Well, I really appreciate um, you helping sponsor some more events and just um, being really easy to work with, too. Um, it's been very pleasant. We've appreciated your support a lot, too. Yeah, I love doing it. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just found the picture of your family on the website. Everybody's super cute fam. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. So... I love, I want to read the quote too from the website. It was 1 Peter 1, 3, which is God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And it says below, not only does he teach us how to nurture our souls by striving to be holy, he has also provided all for all of our physical needs. He's made available vast amounts of healing elements that come from the earth, such as herbs, flowers, salts, clays, minerals, and animal products. His gifts are abundant and available for us to enjoy and prosper. And I seek to put these natural elements into work to help our body and skin. That part kind of just sums it up too, which is great. Um, cause so much of today, I think it's why I sort of am rebranding my stuff to authentic medicine. I feel like people don't even really know what natural is or isn't. And any product can technically label itself as natural, right? You see that all the time, like natural chicken wings, but they're from a non-organic farm that uses antibiotic food or, you know, doesn't have appropriate practices to really say that they're in any way healthier than a product that's not labeled natural. So there, it is kind of like the wild west out there and people are slowly learning how to educate themselves and knowing what really is natural, what's healthy, what is um, ancient practices. And I think the tallow is one of those beautiful things that has been around for a long time, but it's finally coming back into popularity again, which is great. Um, do you see, are there any products that you're interested in making in the future or things that you have kind of up and coming? Yes, actually, um, I'm working with a acupuncturist and she's an expert in Chinese herbal medicine. And so we are, um, coming out with two wellness products 
and really excited about those. Very cool. Yeah. Thinking like this year, next year sometime. Actually, about. it should be within the next. The product is ready. It's a matter of getting the label printed or getting label made and printed and getting everything jarred, but the product's ready. So I would say within the next month or maybe two. So we're hoping this summer before Great. summer's over. It's exciting. Nice. Um, and there's a few just general questions I want to ask just about yeah. you, your life, just to get so people can get to know you a little more too. Um, but if there, if you were allowed to invite three people to have dinner with, alive or dead, what three people <laughs> would you want to have dinner with? Like it could be um, anyone from all time, even a fictional character. If you're like, I want to talk to Elmo or something weird, but. Oh boy. Oh man. I'm not quick on my feet like this. <laughs> um, well, I definitely have to say Jesus would be number one. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I don't need reasons, but I mean, I think yeah. it's probably obvious. <laughs> um, so definitely, yeah, definitely Jesus would be at, at the head of the table as I feel mm -hmm. like he should be in everyone's life. Um, Oh man. Hmm. Maybe one of the founding fathers of our country would be an interesting, um, I don't know which one. <laughs> not, That'd not be a good... super interesting. I feel yeah. like I'd go, I don't know. There's so many. Ben Franklin would be pretty wild. Yeah. For sure. But hmm. founding father. Yeah. And get then, like Sam uh, Adams. Man, somebody, let's, let me think. You know, this is going to be kind of a, a random one, but just because I love health so much, I would think, I think Weston Price, Weston A. Price would be really interesting to talk to. Oh, yeah. That would be so cool. Gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's a tough it. question. So I'll probably think about it later. Oh, I should have said this person and this person. But... Yeah. And if people don't know who Weston Price is or who Jesus is, you should go look them up. They're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 100%. These are other rapid fire. Um, Okay. Do you have a favorite health food besides tallow or raw honey? I have a lot. <laughs> Where should I start? I don't know. Um, if you had to pick like one that everybody should, you'd want everybody to try or consume once in a while, what would that be? I feel like everyone's got to know about raw this milk one. would definitely be one of them. Assuming that they can have milk, but I've also heard a lot of times that it's not the milk that's the problem. It's the process, uh, pasteurization. But I love yep. raw milk and raw cream. Um, but we eat a lot of we eat a lot of meat. Well, elk too. My husband's a hunter, so he goes to Colorado once a year, brings home an elk. So I would say elk would be another another big one. Very very Does good he, meat. That's impressive. Does he drive back with it, or he's like checking in a bag in my airplane, or how does he? <laughs> no, he drives. Yeah, him and okay. his friends out there and they have a place they hunt and they drive it back. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Um, how can you get raw milk in California? Is that still kind of like semi-legal? No. no, actually, amazingly, because, you know, everybody thinks of, this is something I find interesting because Texas and Oklahoma and Kentucky are supposed to be such freedom states. You can't buy raw milk there. You can buy it in California. So I go oh. get it at um, Mother's Market. It's one of my favorite grocery stores. Sprouts carries it. There's another store called Fermentation Farm. So it's not illegal to sell and it doesn't even have to be labeled for animal use, but it is, it is legal in California. So yeah, I just go to the grocery wow. store. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Hmm. All right. And then do you have any um, favorite morning habits or like healthy morning habits or routines that you like to make sure you get in every day? I have a lot. I could, I don't, I can't say that I'm super consistent with every one of them. Um, but yeah, I like to get outside in the morning and I just got some new little lounge chairs outside. So I'm trying to get out there and do some stretching and then just kind of lay there for a little bit. Um, I try, well, I like to pray every morning. Um, I am trying to get back into studying my Bible a little bit every morning. And I, that's one thing I can't say I do every morning, but um, that's one thing that's on my, on my goal list, I guess you could say. Um, nice. And then also I've been doing some lemon water um, with some salt and some olive oil in the morning just to get the digestion, get the liver toxins out. Um, 
I still drink coffee, <laughs> but I am, I'm down to half calf <laughs> and it's nice. purity, coffee. but I do love oh, my coffee. It's one of my, great. I don't drink. I don't do a lot of things, but I do love coffee. So yeah, nice. that's one of my morning routines, but I am waiting instead of doing it first thing in the morning, I'm waiting about an hour or so doing the other nice. things first and then drinking some water. And then before I'll have my coffee. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Half calf is the gateway drug before you know it, you'll skip it one day and be like, Oh my God, I didn't even notice it. What happened? But I think if you're going to have coffee, you might as well really like love it and enjoy it and savor it as much as possible. I agree with the raw cream. Oh, it's so good. Oh, see, we don't have the cream. So like, it doesn't, it's not the same here, I guess. I'll have to try that. Right. I have to visit California and hunting beach. Um, is there anything as far as like physical therapy? Do you ever miss part of that life at all? Or are you kind of like over it at this point and like raising kids was way better? I'm just curious, like how you feel about that looking back. You know, it's been, it's been so long and I feel like a lot of the knowledge still stays with you. There's just like the knowledge of how the body works. And I feel like in physical therapy, we were always taught to look at the body as a whole. It's like, if you have back pain, don't look at just the back. You got to start, you know, watch them walk and look at the feet and the ankles and the knees and the hips. And so I think just, um, just having that background has been just super helpful. Um, I, th I remember at one point thinking that I would go back to it, but yeah, I mean, I just, like I said, the knowledge of even just the body mechanics of how to sit, how to, you know, posture, how to work out. I think that's been really helpful, but as far as actually treating patients, I don't think that I would ever go back to that. It's just been so long, I guess you'd say it's been a long time and I feel like a lot's changed. It's probably so much more information that I'd have to go back and like redo my schooling to really, you know, know the, the current, uh, treatments. Got it. Um, okay. Looking through other questions. And had. Raising kids has been very yeah. I'm sure that takes up a good amount of time. Do you have any tips for how to raise oh, a lot yeah. of kids? <laughs> tips. Um, <laughs> I say for if, if you can, I, I really, the stay at home mom thing has been great. I mean, or if you can work out of the house, like my daughter stays at home, but she does work for me. She does another social media account. So she's able to, to be there. Um, just really pouring into your kids, you know, um, even if people have to work or have to do, a, you know, be out of the house is just having a village, having as much family as you can around you. Um, I didn't always have a lot of family around me and that was, that was difficult. And so that's one thing I want to do for my kids is, is really be there to help them. Cause I think that's just so helpful to have that community Yeah, Definitely. and just open conversation. I mean, trying to really talk to, talk to your kids because especially nowadays and limiting what they see and hear and you know, yep. not handing them, you know, phones with everything on it, you know, stay away from the social media and stuff like that until they're able to navigate that world, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I would definitely agree on that. Try to limit the phones as much as much as possible. I mean, within reason these days, if you probably didn't give them a phone at all, they probably would start to run away from home at this point. <laughs> if they got to be like 16, 18 years old without a phone. Yeah. And there's things, there's a one called the Gab phone. That's what my 14 year old has now. And it's just talk and text. And so there's oh, nice. no, you cannot even get, you know, any kind of Instagram or anything. And so we'll stick with that until he's at least, I don't know, 17 or so, or maybe 18. I don't know. We'll see. But that's a Great. good one. All right. Um, so last two things, um, there's, I want to talk about like the, what's been the hardest and the best, most rewarding part of having honey be hippie and making your own tallow and that whole journey. And then, um, at the end too, we go through, we ask everybody at the end, kind of like, if you had to, if you knew that you were going to die, you know, in the next soon amount of time, like months, years, you didn't have that much longer to live, what you, kind of wisdom you'd want to leave your friends, family, and community with. But um, I guess we'll ask by asking first, like, of the tallow, the whole tallow journey you've been on for quite some time now, um, what's been the hardest part of that whole process for you? I would say um, the consistencies of the whip tallow is very challenging because working with natural products, you know, like, you know, look at even like coconut oils, like 
you look in your cabinet and like one day it's hard, one day it's soft. It just, it depends on the temperature and everything. So just working with natural products that can get being consistent in the consistency has been yeah. the biggest challenge. Um, and then the cleanup. Oh my goodness. It's like when you've got tallow on like <laughs> tons of stuff and you're trying to use non-toxic, you know, we're not using Dawn dish soap here <laughs> and right. you're trying to get all that tallow off. Like it's just a constant, you know, constant cleanup of also. Yeah. But I'd say, yeah, just, just trying to, and then like you mentioned earlier, keeping the, um, keeping our stock up, you know, keeping yeah. enough supply has been, um, and then just all the little business stuff. I mean, I'm not real techie. And so just really trying to get help with like taxes and, you know, all the stuff that's, I'd rather just be in the kitchen, like just put me in the kitchen. I'm in my happy place, but put the computer and ask me to do a bunch of, you know, <laughs> I understand business concepts, but ask me to actually sit down and, and work numbers and stuff. It's like, I'll just, yeah not my thing yeah but yeah just yeah. you know just all the things with business comes that's been probably the most challenging so on the far opposite side of the spectrum what's been the most beneficial or rewarding aspect for you so far stories i get back it's i just i mean when you get people you know please don't stop ever making this this has changed my life you know you're going really like wow that's like I've even cried sometimes I'll get a, like a big long DM or a text from somebody and it's like, it can bring tears to your eyes. Cause you just realize that when you, sometimes you think, Oh, it's just skincare. It's just whatever. But when you, you know, when someone's struggling with something and you can help them in a nice, healthy way, and it's, it's really, really rewarding. And it's, it really does keep you going. You know, some days like, you know, things can be a little difficult and it's like, you get that one DM and it's like, all right, let's go. We're doing, you know, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> So yeah, yeah for sure. they just, just dealing with people. I, I like people and, um, I haven't found very many difficult people or difficult customers. You know, I think when you deal with them in a nice way and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's been really, really rewarding. Love that. Yeah. I think people don't realize that when you have like chronic s skin issues on your hands, your arms, your face, especially stuff that's visible, it really starts to impact your self-esteem, your mental health how you people don't go out of the house or they don't go to friend groups. They start, you know, staying home and that really can damper someone's spirit and life significantly. So I think when you have products that are profoundly healing to not just like the external view of yourself, but also the internal, um, you're really changing lives from the outside in. Right. Especially with eczema. I never realized how many people deal with eczema. And babies, like I, one lady sent me a picture of a baby who I guess the, got out of the sleep sack or something and just tore their face up. It was like blood everywhere because they were itching so bad. And she was like, do you think this could help? And so they started using the products and it did help. Unfortunately, they were doing other um, routine treatments that once the eczema went away, they went back and got this thing and it came back and then they were like, Oh, I think they're allergic to something in the thing. And I'm like, no, it's probably the thing, but you know, sometimes they don't put two and two together. That's kind of heartbreaking. Cause I don't know how much I can tell people like, well, maybe you should just start going to a naturopath or, you know, right. homeopath or something and not going to your pediatrician. But, yeah. but yeah, a lot of, a lot of eczema stories and it's, um, that can be life changing. I mean, I know eczema from what I hear it itches, it burns. It's like, it's not just a, a looks thing. It's, it's really uncomfortable for people. And I think yeah. tallow is really healing for eczema. For sure. Yep. It's kind of like, you don't know how good you have it until you have a toothache or a sinus infection or a migraine or, you know, you can't sleep. And same thing with the skin. It's like when you have great skin or you don't have eczema, when you get it, you realize how lucky you had it before. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, so thanks for making products that help people, but, um, yeah, I think we'll end like we do most podcasts, which is asking you if you were to get some serious illness or you only had a short time left on this planet, what would be one like nugget of wisdom or a quote or some kind of message you want to leave to your friends, family, and community? Um, I would say number one is just be honest. I, um, I, grew up with a, I don't want to get too much, too much into my past, but I have a, a family member, not in my immediate family, you know, somebody that raised me, 
who is just one of the most dishonest people that I people that I know, and it's heartbreaking. And so I would say just if being honest and having integrity in everything you do is just so important. Um, and if I didn't have long to live, I just want my family around, my kids, yeah. my husband, my grandbaby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it shows you what your priorities are. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You no. Know? It's not like, oh, I need to sell more tallow to go buy more raw milk or I need the second oh, second Ferrari or something. It's like, nope, it's all about family and being honest, which is great. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jill. I know you haven't done many of these, but you did super well. <laughs> and, thank, you. Uh, thank you. I'm sure people are going to love listening and um, probably need to go make some more products so they don't all sell out again. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And yeah, it's been wonderful. Thanks, yeah, happy to spread the message some more. <laughs>